Welcome to the next in my series on uh, C++ programming uh, in games development, really, on the Raspberry Pi. A lot of technologies get mixed around here. C++ is the programming language. Games development is the subject area. Raspberry Pi is going to be a hardware platform of choice. And in this video, we're going to look at something uh, called the Simple Direct Media Layer and the boilerplate code that we need to use the Simple Direct Media Layer to write simple games on the Raspberry Pi. Boilerplate code is that kind of code that you kind of need to write in order to get something to work. Our boilerplate code is slightly more involved than uh, a hello world in the SDL because we want to write something that's extensible so that we can write a, a much more uh, interesting game on top of it. As usual, uh, Creative Commons licensed video, so do with it as you wish once you attribute this person who is me. I am Aidan Delaney at the University of Brighton, so uh, feel free to contact me via those various methods should you have any questions. My usual assumptions that I'll state about you is that you have a Raspberry Pi, either a real one, a piece of hardware, or you're emulating one using something like QEMU. I'm going to assume that I don't have to explain Linux command line stuff to you, that you're familiar with it, and I'm also going to assume that I don't have to explain how to install applications using the Linux uh, command line. Uh, I should say that this video tutorial is part of a series of lectures, and they're kind of 15-20 minute overviews of uh, what I go into in more depth in class at the University of Brighton. System prerequisites, you need a C++ compiler, preferably the GNU C++ compiler, you need uh, SDL and SDL image uh, development libraries uh, on Raspberry, uh, the uh, Debian version that ships on the Raspberry Pi. That's the command line magic that you need to install things. We also need, li need libsig C++, which is a, a magical great library, uh, which provides us with a very C++ way of sending signals around a system. And I like to use gedit as my text editor, but this uh, video I won't be going into any uh, demos. We're just going to have a look at uh, code from a high enough level. But first of all, you know, we want to write a game, a game loop. So what the hell is a game loop? And this is a nice kind of high-level block diagram of what's going on here. To write a game, what we want to do is initialize some kind of graphics context. In our case on the Raspberry Pi, what we're going to be doing is asking the SDL to give us a window uh, and a 2D canvas in that window on which we can draw. We could, alternatively maybe, ask another library to give us a 3D context. So ask the OpenGL graphics card in your machine to give you a, a 3D context in which to draw 3D information. If we're sticking with 2D, then we're going to initialize our game world. In our case, again, what we're going to do is uh, create a, an application to handle uh, an application class which will handle uh, the, the initialization of our 2D world and it will draw sprites to a screen. After that, we're going to go into this infinite loop of processing uh, the, the game loop. And the game loop in a straightforward game is pretty simple. You get some input from the user. You update the game world based on the input from the user and possibly some physics calculations, and then you draw that game world to screen. And you just go through those three steps over and over again until at some stage the user input is, hey, can I quit please? What we use SDL for is platform independent window handling. Now, it would be interesting, but actually kind of uh, apart from what we want to do here, to uh, write OS 10 code in Objective-C to open a window, or to write uh, Windows code in C++ to open a window, or to write Linux code in a variety of languages to open a window on that platform. Rather than do that, we're just going to trust SDL can do that for us, and it does it very well. So similarly, it, we can use it as a nice API for doing spot platform specific mouse or keyboard handling for us. The other thing we're going to use SDL for is to implement a timer, which unlike what it says there on the slide won't be quite 60 milliseconds, but a 60th of a second. Every 60th of a second we want the timer to fire to drive our game loop. Uh, and uh, we'll also use the SDL uh, event system to uh, recognize keyboard and mouse events. 
I will also use it for something called blitting graphics, and I use that technical word because um, the SDL call uses the word blit. Uh, and and uh, quite simply, blitting graphics means, uh, in our context, taking one sprite, and here on the screen you can see uh, the, the, the little star logo sprite, uh, and taking a background, in our case on the screen here, it, it's a very, uh, it's a black canvas, and uh, blitting one onto the other, fast copying one onto the other. Um, blitting is a bit more involved than that, it normally uh, involves uh, dealing with transparencies, you may have also heard the term compositing, which is quite similar. Um, if you're interested in blitting, have a look at the Wikipedia page. For now, we're just going to treat it as meaning that we're copying sprites on top of other sprites in a background. As to the boilerplate code, the code is on my GitHub site. It's The project's called Starship Fontana, because you need a silly name for every game. You want to clone that code, cd into the directory that you've uh, cloned it into, and then check out the boilerplate branch. Now there's a specific boilerplate branch because it's been pruned down to only having a, 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 as much code as we need to, to see something on screen. The boilerplate code does use something called an SF asset. I won't explain the operation of an SF asset until the next video because it's just slightly more involved. But what you'll notice is that a lot of the classes in the system um, have this SF prefix, meaning Starship Fontana, and that means that I can talk about an asset, or I can talk about an app, or I can talk about an event, and then I can uh, talk about the, the, the specific SF event, or the SF asset as implemented in the system, as being two separate things. But we can go back to our block diagram of a game loop, and we can see that the, the parts of the code that deal with each part of that block. The first thing is the graphics context initialization, which is handled in the init graphics of the, in the main.cpp file. This is actually a nice straightforward uh, uh, method. It declares a width, height, and a color depth, which are a specific uh, type, uh, an unsigned 32-bit integer. The UN32 is provided for us by uh, SDL. And then we call the SDL init method and pass it a single parameter, which are these three flags, the SDL init video, SDL init audio, and SDL init timer, all, all ORed together. SDL has other subsystems, such as its networking subsystem, but we're not going to use it. We only want the video, audio, and timer subsystems. The SDL init documentation says that if it returns a value less than zero, that's an error, otherwise it's, it succeeds. If there's an error, we'll print something to standard error, uh, to, for the user to see, and then we'll throw an exception. Otherwise, we will uh, request a window of a specific width, a specific height, a specific color depth, and we'll ask for that window canvas to be double buffered. This means that we'll have an on-screen canvas <coughs> whilst we're drawing to an off-screen canvas. This means uh, so we can draw our uh, next frame in the sequence to the off-screen canvas and swap that on-screen when we're finished drawing it. This reduces the amount of tearing that one might see on screen. If, for example, you had, uh, if you overdrew on the on-screen canvas, it might display to the user before you'd finished drawing. Then finally, if that succeeds, the video mode setting, we'll set the caption of the window to being Starship Fontana, the name of our game. And that initializes our graphics context. Second thing we're going to do is initialize our game world. In our case, it's going to be quite simple. We're going to have a, an SF app class. Uh, it's an, a class that handles the entire application lifecycle of um, our Starship Fontana. And in its constructor, what we're going to do is set a boolean called is running to being true. We are going to store a reference to the surface. Uh, that we're going to use as the background for uh, our, our, to, to come on which to blit our sprites. We're going to create a player object and we're going to set the position of that player object to being a specific x and y value uh, stored in a point two object. The game loop itself is then driven by the game loop timer. Every 60th of a second this 1000 is, is a thousand millis in a second, and that's divided by 60. So every 60th of a second, we're going to add the S, uh, a timer to SDL to call the push update event method. 
and the push update event method creates a new method up, called uh, an update event and then it adds it to the SDL uh, event queue. The SDL event queue is uh, waited on by the uh, on execute uh, method in the S in the SF app class. So while there are events in the queue, so wait forever, and for every event that comes into that queue, we'll, we'll grab it, we'll turn it into one of our uh, Starship Fontana events, our internal event representation in our game, and then we'll handle that event. It's interesting to note that the only way of breaking this waiting for new events is to set the is running boolean to false. So what we'll find is when we handle these events in the on event uh, method, uh, we will handle a quit event by simply setting the is running boolean to false. And we'll handle an update event, which is one of these events that's created by the timer firing every 60th of a second by calling the update world method and then the render method. And if we have a look inside the render method, we'll see that it's very straightforward itself. What we do is we will fill the surface, the background, with a single RGB color. Um, and this is just uh, three magic numbers that I've picked to, uh, to represent a nice blue color. Then we will draw the player by passing the surface to the player, uh, the SF uh, asset object uh, called player. And, um, it will draw itself onto that surface and then we will flip the surfaces we'll flip the off-screen buffer to be on screen and that's it so what we've quite quickly covered is the higher level idea of a game loop we've quickly covered the implementation of that game loop in C++ using SDL and to do that we've looked at the SDL timers We've looked at having a top-level application class, the Starship Fontana app class, and we've had a look at event queues and waiting on that, those event queues. So the last thing to do is for me to thank you for listening, and hopefully I'll see you next time.